Breaking news, the United States has just lost its top-notch AAA credit rating from Standard & Poor's. S&P just cut the long-term U.S. credit rating by one notch to AA+, on concerns about growing budget deficits. U.S. Treasuries, once seen as the safest investment in the world, are now rated lower than bonds issued by the United Kingdom, Germany, France, and Canada. Rejoining me now is MSNBC contributor Ezra Klein. Ezra, I have refused to believe this was going to happen. I, I, I'm virtually speechless on this. What does it mean to the consumer out there, and what does it mean to our politics? There's going to be a blame game played very quickly on this. Here's the first thing you need to know. They did not downgrade our ability to pay. Nothing changed in our economy this week, this month, in the last three months, nothing significant. They downgraded our political system. Congress right. just got downgraded, is what happened here today. And what it means for politics is my understanding, and I have not had time to go through the report, but the rumors today was that they would mention the resistance of Republicans to revenue Revenue specifically, their willingness to put the U.S. credit rating and default on the table We've been to hearing keep that tax day. increases there from right. coming on the table. If that happens, people keep saying Senate Republicans want an opening to make a compromise, want an opening for a grand bargain that they can outflank House Republicans. This would give them that opening. They, and so this is the one thing that we can see in our landscape that may shake up. Republican solidity in the anti-tax position they're holding. Absolutely. Republicans do listen to markets. They do have a lot of friends and particularly donors in markets. So when a lot of these guys like Tom Coburn, but much more to the point like Mitch McConnell, like John Boehner, begin hearing from managers of hedge funds, managers of investment banks and saying, what are you doing? It is time to stop. You have taken it too far. We are now facing consequences. This is going to get more significant. Remember, too, that a lot of other types of bonds are linked to the national credit rating, municipalities, uh, states, hospital bonds, a lot of different things that rely on American uh, federal payments. So you could see this rippling further down throughout the credit structure, depending on how S&P decides to play it. We're going to go to John Harwood, who's uh, joining us by phone. Uh, John, uh, has the administration uh, reacted to this yet? Uh, I just got off the phone with an administration official who said it's amateur hour at S&P. Because of the back and forth that happened today, the uh, ratings agency informed the government this afternoon that it intended to downgrade, provided the uh, computations that were underlying that decision. They were shown, uh, career officials showed computation errors in the debt-to-GDP ratio, apparently involving a uh, confusion about the proper baseline to use. S&P then went back and reconsidered. Now they're going ahead and downgrading, and uh, uh, that is not sitting well with the administration. John, uh, what do you expect to hear from the administration about this? Uh, they, they surely have to have, they've had some hours to anticipate it. They must have uh, a position that they're going to stake out on it. I think what they're likely to say, Lawrence, is that uh, two of the three major aging agencies have maintained AAA. Uh, secondly, they'll say that uh, uh, U.S. Treasury securities are the most familiar financial instruments in the world, and so what the rating agencies themselves say doesn't matter because investors already know the product. Uh, and I think they're also going to, uh, uh, in effect, say it's, it, it's not going to make much difference. Uh, I talked to an administration official last week who said if you really look at how many institutions have to divest because of the decision by one rating agency, it's very small. So uh, the projection that I've gotten is that the uh, impact on interest rates on U.S. borrowing costs is likely to be quite small from this. But, of course, we'll see, and we'll see how the market reacts. And in a market with a fr uh, psyche as fragile as this one, you don't know whether uh, this would be a blow that would be consequential. CNBC's John Howard, thanks for joining me on this breaking news event. And Ezra Klein, thanks for rejoining us this evening. Thank you.